last lecture, I realized that I left uh, some very important parts out. Yes. I should use the mic. For the recording. Yes. Thank you. Do you hear me? Yes. I was hearing, but yes, yes. Yeah, you are right. It's better if it's coming from all over the place. So I I did tell you what Taylor series were and what analytic function was, but I didn't derive Taylor series from the definition of the analytic function. Okay, it was it's very easy, but let me just uh, remember. Okay, okay. Let's make it. Remember, so an analytic function was written like this, n equals to zero, infinity, a n x minus x zero. I know that what you are thinking, didn't we already do this a billion times? Okay, this was the, the definition of analytic function. And this was the Taylor series. Fx could be written as Fn x0 n factorial x minus x0 to the power of n, right? So, you can see that if you compare this one with this one, I just need to show you that a n corresponds to this one, right? So, let me quickly do that. So, if I take this one and take the first derivative and evaluate it at x0, okay, the first derivative, what is the first derivative? a0 derivative gives you 0, right? Uh, then you have a1, you have a1, then you have uh, plus 2 times a2 times x minus x0 minus x0, and the rest will be also 0, right? So you can see that a1 is actually f, the first derivative evaluated at x0, right? Let's do one more step. Uh, this time you get 2a2, right? The rest is 0. Then a2 is f2 x0 divided by 2. One final step, maybe. This time you have to take the derivative of a3 x minus x0 to the power of 3. So first there will be 3 coming down here, then there will be the remaining 2, right? So it will be like 2 times 3 times A3. So which gives you A3 equals F3 3 factorial. Once you see the pattern, you are convinced that this is the tail. This is how you get the Taylor series. With me right now? Yes, good. Okay, one more thing that we <coughs> skipped really quick. I will come back to it, but let's now talk about uh, applying this uh, Taylor series to find integrals numerically. Okay? For example, let's say so. Numerical integration. <clears throat> so let's say you have a function, uh, you have a system that has a derivative. I mean, the change of it depends on some function. Uh, we are not 
considering right now the case where f is f of x and y okay we will come to that in the next week when things will be changing with with respect to themselves okay so uh, today we will do the easier one uh, integrating just uh, integrating a function so let's say you start with y x 0 equals y 0 so if you plot it let's say this is f of x this is x let's say this is the function okay so what you do here is you choose let's say this is x0 this is y0 so you want to go from here let's say from here all the way here and integrate it but uh, you are doing it in a computer so, so you need to discretize things right so what you do is you discretize it like this basically try to find the areas of these bars okay so now let's look at uh, the Taylor series for example let's say this distance is h okay are you following then I can write down y of x n plus h if I'm writing the Taylor series and h is really small number okay then I can approximate it as x n plus h times uh, the derivative of y at x n do you agree with this and there are higher order terms but I will not go to them so far I will come back to that in a moment so what is this yes and uh, does it look around do you do you see it anywhere else dy over dx it's f of x do you see it yes so basically y x n plus h is equal to y x n plus h times <coughs> f of x n plus higher order terms but we will ignore them so let's now uh, go to coding and let's try to uh, find an integral of x squared or something okay doesn't matter so I start with clear okay then uh, I take I use this syntax okay let's let's play with it for for a moment let me save this as uh, coding version one doesn't matter so let's say it's x squared so this is how you define a function in MATLAB okay uh, and now for example f of 2 will give me what four. yes I run it and I get the answer for right so I start uh, I want to integrate it from 0 x equals to 0 to some L equals let's say 1 okay uh, now I need to uh, break it into pieces let's say I'm breaking it into 100 pieces okay breaking the whole thing into 100 pieces then my h will be basically l over n are you following so far? Yes. so let's say I start with a total of 0 
the, this is the integral and for n equals to from 1 to n okay what should be the next line uh so if you remove a from the four lines exact uh, which line line number Uh, over inside the four? No, just put lines. Line seven. Line seven. Yes. I should include what? H. Make it incrementally increase by H. Oh, I will do it uh, in the following way. Let me see how I do it. Let me cheat from here. So I will do it in the following way. X equals to n times H. Does it work for you? Everybody understands what I just did? Yes? And I will say that total is equal to total plus what? Exactly, the derivative times h. h times the function at that point, right? So it will be h times f of x. Do you agree? Yes. Did we use f equal to the of cosine x? Did we use what? F of uh, what is that? Uh, at, uh, did we use this line? Yeah, yeah what's the uh, Okay, let's, let's go back to that line. So let's let's just run this part. Now I have a function. Do you see it? It appears here with a weird something symbol here. So if you say f ten, it you get it gives you hundred. So it, it is your function, whatever you define it. If it was an exponential function or if it was x cubed, if you define it that way, okay, then f of 2 will give you 8. Okay? Yes? Hmm? I am recording. Thank you very much. <coughs> very good. Uh, you are more alive today. I like that. What is the result? Uh, I, I can simply type total at the end without the semicolon. So that will display me the total that I get, right? What do you expect to get uh, if it's x cubed? I'm going from 0 to 1 integral of x cubed. Something around 1, smaller than my factor of x0.7. Why, why is that? x cubed integral is x to the 4 over 4. So evaluate it to in 1 and 0 gives you 1 over 4, right? Yes. Are you ready? Running? It's 1 over 4-ish, like it's almost 1 over 4. Of course, if you increase this to a 1,000, it will get closer and closer to 1 over 4, right? Let's actually see what happens when you increase this number. Uh, did, uh, do you have any problems so far? No? Bishra? Uh, where? Do you mean something like yes. this? Is equal to fx. Okay, thank you very much. Very good suggestion. So, uh, you're yeah, right. I'm not using comments. I'm not using... I mean, like, I'm the worst coder that I know, basically, really. Uh, but uh, <coughs> what can I do? Uh, let's, l let me do the following. I will look for, uh, actually, let me, instead of n starting with n equals 1 and going to n, 
I will start with n equals 0 and go to n minus 1. It will give me the same thing, but something from the below. It has to do with something that I'm about to do. Okay? It doesn't matter whether the error is underestimating, overestimating, right? For n equals 1 to 100, okay, let's, let's define something called h0 of n. And let's define something like total of n. And let's define h equals to h0 of n. So I, I need to change this one as well. Total of n, total of n. And I need an end here. And then I choose everything. I press Control i and everything is pretty. So what I just did, I just took from n equals 1 to 100, the big n equals 1 to 100 which means that I will try doing this integral with just one uh, increment one increment which is like just taking two points here v very uh, crude or rough integral right uh, and if I choose okay let's let me actually write it otherwise so, for example, for n equals 5, this integral will be something like, let's, let's say I'm going from 0 to 1. I will have like one point here, 2, 3, 4, 5. Just imagine that they are equally apart from each other. So I will find the, uh, the areas of uh, these parts, I guess. Right? Uh, and as n goes to 100, you, you, you remember that it was getting closer and closer to uh, the actual result. Okay? Yes? What do you mean? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you can erase this line. Very good. And let's actually save it as coding version 2. So, let's now plot all possibilities. Everything that we got, like for every h0 that we, we, we chose, what is the total n? Okay? What do you expect to get? Yes, exactly. Something that becomes constant, something that approaches the right, the correct result. Uh, well, this is the result, but let's plot it much prettier way, in a much prettier way. So I will do, uh, I always, okay, not this one, but this one this one okay do you always have the same mistake okay so i will put marker size to 25 i will set still don't get it but it works 20 is enough i guess so you can see that as n grows, h becomes smaller and smaller, right? As h becomes smaller and smaller, you approach this 1 over 4 linearly. Uh, actually, if we forget about these parts, how can we forget about them? Uh, we can just do it, uh, we can just plot from 20 or 30 to n from 30 to n. Then you, you see the, the actual linear approach. So if you use uh, 
the first order of Taylor series, you get the integral that is correct up, up to f, the first order. Okay? Are you happy? Yes? W what if it was a constant? I, I really wonder what happens. Hmm. <coughs> what is it here and why it is not linear? It's just perfect. Because the, the integral of a constant already has the order of x. Okay? Uh, that's why you don't get any error. What about exponential function? Do we still get linear correction even if we use something as unlinear as exponential function? Let's see. Yes, we get linear, something linear. So, who can summarize what we just did and why it is important? We are doing different primal sums. Hmm? We are doing different primal sums. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, these are different Riemann sums, yes. you see. I didn't know that I was doing that, but... Uh, Riemann? Really? No, am I mistaken? Am I yeah, Asperger, it's called Riemann sum here. Ah, oh. uh, okay. Basically just discreetly dividing the domain into different rectangles and then okay. adding okay. their areas all together. Great. Uh, so I'm doing the yes. Riemann sum yeah. with, uh, let's say, first order of approximation yeah. in Taylor series, right? Exactly. Very good. So, what I want to do next is to show you that you can do better if you remember the properties of, uh, if you, okay, let me write it first, then I will explain you. So, we have used yxn plus h equals to yxn Mm, plus h f x x n. Do you agree? What is the next term? The next term is plus uh, h squared over 2, the derivative of f with respect to this one. Do you agree? Everybody agrees? Mm. <clears throat> what I will do is I will write it in the following way xn plus I will just take this one and break it into two pieces two equal pieces Okay, pretty. So what I will do is next, uh, I don't want to keep repeating stuff, so I will take this one and uh, I can write it in parentheses h over 2. It will be fxn plus h times df over dx xn. Right? Do you see why I'm smiling? What is this one? Here. First order approximation to fxn uh, plus h. Right? So then you can actually write it down since it's h over 2 times this one. Okay, you, you can see when I point at things. So I will write it down. Xn plus h can also be written as h over 2 times f okay, what is this one? <laughs> this is xn. xn plus f 
xn plus h. So if we are calling it Riemann sum, it's the next level of the Riemann sum, right? The next higher order of it. Have you ever done this in your computer? Have you ever checked whether things work like this? Yes? No, right? I, I hope I'm doing something new for you. Otherwise, it's just boring. Anyways, what, what do we change here if we want to include the next level? Uh, look at the formula and look at here. Yes, we, we are going to write h over 2 times fx plus fx plus h, right? What do you expect to get after I run this program? Exactly. It will approach to the correct result which is, which is, by the way, e to the x integral from 0 to 1 is e minus 1, right? That's our result. But it will approach it quadratically. Let's see. Very nice, right? Yeah. If you don't trust that it's a, it's a, it's a second order thingy, I, I will just do basic fitting quadratic. And you can't even see that something changed. It's perfectly aligned. Do you see it? You can also see it in the terms. Uh, like P1 is much bigger than P2. Right? Are you with me? Yes? Let's do one more order. Or is it too boring? You want me to do one more order? Yes? Good. I'm happy. <coughs> so to find the next order, I'm going to first write xm plus h Now you can see h f x n h squared over 2 d f over d x x n plus h cubed x n so I take the next term and now uh, I see the pattern here it's something that like I have h here and then fxn, fxn plus h, something like that, right? With some constants in front, like 1 over 2, 1 over 2 for each one of this one and this one. So now I will assume that what I will get at the end can be written as yxn plus h times a times fxn plus b times fxn plus h over 2 plus c times fxn plus h. Okay? What we are doing here is we are developing predictor corrector uh, methods to find integrals. Okay? Is it new to you still? No, it's not new to you? Yes, you'd know it, right? Okay. Okay. But have you derived it? Or you just used... You did it. Like fourth order... Like Ranga Kutta stuff. Yes? Hmm? Okay. 
like Verlet algorithm and everything, right? There, there are so many leapfrog algorithms, yes. So, uh, but some of you may not have seen this, uh, and if we just skip it, then it will be not a fully contained course, right? I promise there is no prerequisite. Okay, uh, so <clears throat> what what I do is I open this up. I open everything up. Like for example, over here, I will write it as b times uh, f x n plus h over two times f uh, derivative of f x n. Okay, and this one will be c times f x n plus h times uh, sorry f x n over d x did you follow what I did? then there will be like h h cubes h squares that I, I can find out by equaling them to this one. You can imagine that you get a system of a, a system of equations. Yes? Which is the following a plus b plus c <coughs> equals one. Okay. Uh, b over two plus c equals one over two. B over eight plus c over two equals one over six. How do I get that? Let me just show you a plus b plus c. So you can see that there is an h here, right? Then there is this a here times fx, b times fx, and c times fx, right? So h times a plus b plus c times fx has to be equal to h times fx, right? Then that's how you get these equations. Then from here, you, you will get some h squared term and you have to equal that to this term etc right how do you solve this kind of equations systems of equations if you are in this course yes uh, you use uh, we can define this as a matrix multiplication by the way we can always do this So basically, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1 over 2, 1, and 0, 1 over 8, 1 over 2, multiplied by A, B, C is equal to 1, 1 over 2, 1 over 6, right? Then, if this is A and this is B, well, let's call it something else let's call it d and this one is x it's the typical equation a matrix times a vector equals a vector so you find this vector by inversing this and multiplying it with d right uh, okay then uh, Let's do it. What was the A? 1, 1, 1, right? Then the next line was 0, 1 over 2, 1. The next line was 0, 1 over 8. And then 1 over 2. Right? This is my A. Do you see A? It's here. Then I multiply it with the vector. I, I multiply the inverse, inverse of A with the vector that I had, which was 1, 1 then 1 over 2, then 1 over 6. OK? Are you ready? So I get something like 
what is this one? 1 over 6, I believe. Then 4 over 6 and 1 over 6 again. So basically the next term, the next level of integration will be h over 6 times fx plus uh, 4 times f x plus h over 2 and fx plus h. Do you agree with this? Yes? What do you expect now? From this integration? Yes, uh, it will be the result with an error that goes with h cubed. Right? Uh, so let's do it and you get the result okay you might think okay it looks like a parabola maybe it's x squared still right let's check tools basic fitting uh, if I do quadratic you can see that it's not spot on right but if I do cubic you don't even realize something changed right it's indeed cubic it's going with a cube so now, in order to connect things, let me show you the Rangakutta method that we will use to investigate systems that has also Y in it. This will be in the next week, okay? You can see that the fourth order, the typical usage of Rangakutta method involves this K1, K2, etc right but notice that k2 and k3 if we ignore that we are dealing with if we ignore the y's k2 and k3 are the same thing right so if you sum them up right you get our one for one that we got so what we are doing in fact is rk4 rangekutta fourth order but in the case of uh, when the system doesn't have itself in it, right? When it's n it's just f of t or f of x, not f of x and y, okay? Uh, I hope it made sense to uh, everyone. So this is a nice place to stop. Let's continue in 10 minutes.